Hey guys, Joe here. Recently a viewer reached out and asked if I could do a follow-up video on this knife here. So that is what we are doing today, a one-year review of the Blade HQ exclusive variant of the Benchmade 940. Now the 940 needs no introduction. It's one of the most iconic American-made folders of all time, right up there with a Buck 110 and a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. It's a really great Goldilocks knife in most people's opinion, and I would agree whether you got small hands, big hands, lefty, righty, want to use it for EDC or even light-duty construction, it's really good for a lot of people for a lot of different use cases. It's just an overall great knife. There's a reason why it's so popular. This is one of the few knives out there that isn't all hype. It really lives up to the legend. We'll go over general specs, talk about all that stuff, do some size comparisons, as well as obviously talk about my thoughts and feelings on using this knife over the last year. But the cool thing about this is while you would associate it with being a sprint run, it's actually not. It's a regular production knife specifically for Blade HQ, which is really, really cool because you don't have to worry about missing out on a drop. It is currently in stock as of filming this and in stock for the same price I paid for it a year ago, $195, which is really cool because a lot of knife companies, especially Benchmade, have year after year been increasing their prices to just ridiculous numbers. But this has stayed the same over the last year, making it probably one of the better value high-end American-made folders on the market today. If you can only get one American-made folder, or at the very least one Benchmade, this should be on your shortlist because you're getting a lot for your money versus what else is out there on the market right now. Getting into the specs, we have just under a three and a half inch blade and most of that as you can see here is cutting edge which is really great. In terms of that blade shape, if it wants to focus we are doing kind of what is called a reverse tonto. You get a good thick stabby tip, you don't have to worry about busting that off. I've seen people use this to pry open pop cans, uh, paint cans, things like that with no issues. In terms of the blade steel, M4 is excellent for a knife like this, more than tough enough for a folder of this size and more than corrosion resistant. The edge isn't a good indication of corrosion resistance because I have stropped it, but if you look at the logo, in my experience, typically those are the first to experience corrosion, and I've barely oiled this knife over the last year. You can see that butterfly is just as pristine as day one. Same thing with that Osborne on the back. I've had absolutely no issues with corrosion. I don't abuse my knives, but I do use them, and you can see the coating has held up great. I've used it on cardboard and things that are typically more abrasive and more likely to damage coatings, and it's still just as good as it was day one. There's a little bit of kind of light snail trailing on it. That's probably mostly from finger oils and things of that nature. In terms of the overall functionality of that blade, I think it is really great. Really great for stabbing, obviously, but also there's enough belly there for draw cuts and things like that. And in terms of the handle, we've got a Smooth Natural or JG10. The smoothness is kind of unfortunate. This has absolutely no grip whatsoever. And the jimping here is functionally useless for me. It's too shallow and way too gentle. But overall, I think because of the size of that handle, you can just wrap your fingers around it. I don't see how you would drop this unless you're working with oil or mud on a regular basis. I think you're not gonna have a problem with it being too smooth. I've got larger than average hands, so my thumb naturally rests all the way up here on the blade. It just is way uncomfortable to be all the way back here. I basically end up with a three-fingered grip and my pinky just hanging off the edge there. But I think even if you've got bigger hands than me, there's still enough room if you choke up on it to be able to use this knife. I definitely wouldn't be able to use the Mini 940. That's basically like a toy to me. But something like this is still okay in my large size hands. And obviously if you have smaller hands than me, this is excellent for you guys as well. You'll actually be able to go back here more comfortably than I can and actually take use of the jimping for what little there is. In terms of the awesomeness of JG10, I just like it. I keep the finish as is. I have several knives in this finish. It's something I really enjoy. But you can dye this with a lot of different writ dyes and whatnot. There's tons of different tutorials on the internet. And so you can get a lot of really cool colors with this. And because it's that natural G10, it has kind of a weird ghostly, almost translucent look to it that you're not really going to get with a lot of aftermarket scales that might come in the color you want. So that is something really cool that you can only really do by dyeing natural G10. It's not something you can really buy otherwise. And that's just something I really, really enjoy. That's kind of like the modder's preference for a knife like this. That's why it is so popular with Blade HQ. 
And on top of that is something that can potentially stain. So you do want to keep that in mind if you're working around a lot of harsh chemicals or things that might be a little bit nasty towards these kind of plastic materials. You might not want this specific variant or you might want to get aftermarket skills. And that's another cool thing about the 940 as a ton of aftermarket support companies like Flytanium make a lot of really great, beautiful scales, including limited release scales for this kind of knife. There's a lot of options out there for switching out the scale should you not like the natural G10 or mess up a die job or something like that. That's something that's really great about this specific model. Not all knives have the market support that the 940 does. And now kind of in general with ergonomics, again, I've got larger sized hands. It's going to be a little bit different for me. But overall, I think most people are going to enjoy this more gently shaped knife. It does have a little bit of contouring there, so it's not very blocky. Overall, I find this to be a really great folder. And lastly, that pocket clip there, I immaturely call this the dick clip, but it's a split arrow and it's something a lot of people really enjoy. It's a little bit unique, a little bit different. I think this is the best pocket clip Benchmades have. I know the deep carry clip is very popular. I have it on my bailout. I enjoy it, but this is my favorite clip. If I could, this would be on all of my Benchmades. It's just something that I find to be really, really cool. Let's get into some size comparisons here. We'll bring in another iconic knife, the Spyderco PM2. A much larger knife, but when we bring it back to line up the cutting edges, you're definitely getting more cutting edge, more blade on the 940 than you are with the PM2 because of that forward finger choil. Uh, I wouldn't say that one is necessarily better than the other, but I definitely have a preference with the 940 personally, even though I like Spaderco more as a company. I don't have a Benchmade Griptilian, but I do have the large RSK from Hogue. It's a Hogue Raider collaboration exclusive to Knifeworks. This is a sprint run. You can't get it anymore, but it's roughly the same size as a large Griptilian. And so you can see there, there's a huge difference, but overall those cutting edges are very, very similar, if not almost exactly the same. It's just a matter of whether you want a thicker handle or a thinner handle. And obviously it's gonna cost you to get a more premium version of the uh, 940 like this, same as it would be with the Griptilian. So price metrics, I don't really think there's much to compare there. It's just gonna depend on personal preference. Bring in another Benchmade. I have the Adamas here, one of their larger, more iconic, hardworking models. Huge knife, but again, the cutting edge really isn't that much more than 940. Obviously, it's got more belly here. It's got more to grip onto. It's a thicker stock of crew wear, which is a little bit tougher than M4, but they're very similar steels, very great steels on folders. I like both of these knives a lot, but the 940 does end up in my pocket a lot more. And then lastly, a comparison. I don't have a bug out, but I do have the bailout. Again, very comparable knives. This is coming in at like 270 to 290 now, I think with the price hikes, it's just ridiculous. Both are rocking M4, but this has aluminum scales. I would say if you like this on paper, buy this and just buy aluminum scales. You might end up spending a little bit more in the long run, but overall, I like the blade shape of this a little bit more. And I just find it a little bit more of an ergonomic knife in my opinion, though I do love the Bela and carry it quite a bit, as you can see from the slight discoloration in those scales. Overall, I just really like this knife. It's something that you would normally be getting out of a sprint run, such as this guy here. This is Spyderco Native 5, both M4, both JG10, but this was $180 several years ago as part of a sprint run. If Spyderco were to sell this today, it would probably be like $200 to $250. Spyderco, along with Benchmade, have been just constantly increasing their prices to the realm of absurdity. Uh, if I were to spend another $190 to get one of these knives, I would definitely go with this over this any day of the week. Uh, the lock is just more fidget friendly, a much better EDC knife, though I do love the Native 5. I think the only thing, if you like the aesthetic of black and natural G10 that could compete with this, is a knife that unfortunately is not made in the United States. This is the Civivi Elementum. I don't know if this is sold anymore, but you've got coded S35 VN and that natural or JG10 there. It's a little bit of a smaller knife, more comparable probably to the Rat 2. You're not getting quite as much cutting edge, but it is a very great knife. It is a flipper, so it still has some fidget factor, even though it's a liner lock. It's something that is going to be a little bit more reliable. I have not had an Omega Spring bake on me, but I know a lot of people who have. Uh, so if you're really worried about that axis lock or other similar crossbar locks, this might be something to go with if you wanna get the similar aesthetic. I believe this is also a Blade HQ exclusive, but again, I don't know if it's still produced anymore. 
So overall, after a year of use, I really do enjoy this version of the Benchmade 940. I am not a Benchmade fanboy by any means. If anything, I'm the opposite. I've been very critical of the company. A lot of their newer models just don't make sense in terms of the pricing and materials. Their quality control has been abysmal since 2008. It's just unacceptable what's coming out of Benchmade right now. But if every Benchmade that came out of the factory was like this, I'd be singing their praises from the mountaintops. This is what Benchmade should be producing every single day of the week and not just on a Wednesday morning. Uh, I really do like the Benchmade 940, especially this variant. So again, like I said before, if you're looking for an American-made folder or just at Benchmades, you should be looking at this version of the 940. You're getting sprint run level materials with that coded M4 and natural G10. But as a regular production knife, you don't have to worry about missing a drop. And $195 for what else is out there on the American folder market, I think this is probably one of the best values still today. The only things that come close are the Hoag's. And not always are they as good of a deal. For example, you can get Magna Cut on a Hogue Dika, very similar size, but you're usually getting cheap scales on that. I believe Knife Center has an exclusive variant that does have red G10, but you're probably going to have to spend more money to get nicer scales for those to make it a little bit more equivalent. So it's really up to you. Do you want something that is great out of the box, or do you want to get something like the Hogue Dika and Magna Cut and get some aftermarket parts for it? Personally, I think either are really great, but I'm really glad I did pick this up when I picked it up, and I would recommend it after one year of use. So stay safe, stay informed. I hope you all have a great day. The world is crazy, so make sure you smile, give a little bit of positivity, wave to your neighbor. You never know what you can do to make someone's life better, so just try to do your best. See you in the next one, guys.